well, for the second leg of our conversation here on The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa, we have Monday Thomas, who's a sports analyst. He joins us uh, from Aquaibom. Monday Thomas, it's good to have you join us and happy anniversary. I mean, you know, Aquaibom is 35 today. Well, I'm boring to join you guys today as well as Aquaibom celebrates its 35th anniversary. It's been a fantastic ride so far. Well, I'm not 35, so I didn't really know what happened <laughs> way back in 1987. So, but history speaks for itself. Aquaman is developing, is growing, and uh, certainly is uh, the center of attraction as far as Nigeria is concerned. Yes, so, going to talk sports. Yes. So, <laughs> why not? Um, so, uh, let's talk about the games for uh, the, the Super Eagles now, the friendlies we're talking about with Algeria. What do you make of the composition? I mean, we're looking at the composition of. Uh, the players for this friendly games uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the midfield and also the, the oh. wingers. All right, all right. It might not be a star-studded formation. It might not be a star-studded composition, as you want to put it that way. But I think it's time for us to um, get to build a new team. Joseph Rosario is a new manager, he's a new coach, and he wants to, he wants to try out something new for himself. I mean, uh, gone are the days where we used to stick to a particular style of football. Now we have a, a Portuguese manager who, for me, has some level of pedigree as far as uh, modern-day football is concerned. We've seen the likes of the inclusion of the, uh, the new names, Onyedika, and we also seen that some new players, Terry Murphy, not really new. He, he featured for the Super Eagles in that 10-year trashing of Sao Tome and Princip. But I think it's a great composition. It's basically a game where we are going to know how good these players are, especially the new names, the likes of Ibube Duru, who is joining from Rivers uh, United, not forgetting the man who plays in Portuguese league, the Casa Pia man. His name is uh, Godwin, uh, Godwin Simon, who, who's been doing fantastic in his uh, playing days in Portugal. So it's a new composition. I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that they are ready to make the country proud because adorning the jersey of the Super Eagles of Nigeria, you know that you're not playing for just your name. You're playing for the pride of the whole nation. And uh, financially, it's good for your CV as your club will get to respect you more. So I'm thinking these new names, although they're new, uh, they're going to do something remarkable for uh, Team Nigeria or the Super Eagles of Nigeria. But a lot of people are saying, what are we playing for? I mean, none of them is going to the World Cup, which is in, uh, I think, 58 days from now. And uh, you can just see that these people are playing uh, to try to build momentum to ensure that they, uh, they play as a team because football is a team sport and uh, you have to play uh, with the unity. You have to play understanding the formation. You have to play understanding the team so that you can be great. Uh, you, you can produce a great performance when it matters. But for now, I think they're just going there to have fun. But many people will also say, let's go out there and revenge. Let's go out there and revenge the, uh, the loss that we had against the Algerian side in 2019 at the Cup of Nations. Uh, I don't think it's a game where we get to revenge anybody, but it's just a game where we get to watch and ensure that the Super Eagles of Nigeria and also criticize them if they are not producing the performance we expect from them. All right, uh, you've, you've, you've answered our, our next question here, you know, the importance of this game. But I'd like to ask you, um, firstly, uh, does Nigeria really need a new team? Uh, was it a question of the team not being good enough uh, to qualify Nigeria to the World Cup or Nigeria not having the right tactical uh, um, direction and the right coaching to be able to get itself past Ghana to the World Cup, um, if you look at the, the former team. That's number one. Number two, I saw a very interesting uh, post on Twitter uh, over the week. Um, there was this eye emoji, you know what they do, the eye emoji, two eyes, eyeballs, in a picture of, uh, Maru, okay. in a picture of Maruka Okoye uh, doing its warm-up in camp. Um, that got me laugh, cracked up. What are your thoughts on Maruka Okoye's return to the Nigerian team and the reaction of, of football fans uh, of the Super Eagles? So those two questions, yeah. All right. Uh, football is an ungiving, unforgiving sport, especially in this part of the country. If we get to exaggerate on that, if a player makes a mistake, we talk about it time and time. Players, great players in this world, great goalkeepers, the likes of uh, Ike Kasi. I remember his ending part of his career, he was, he was devastatingly bad. The likes of uh, Peter Schmeichel, even Edwin van der Sars, these players or these goalkeepers have gone through a very difficult time in their careers. And I think we should just let bygones be bygones. Monaco Koye is a growing goalkeeper. And you know one thing about goalkeepers. They get better as they are growing older. 
So we should just give him time. He's still a man for us, I think. So Mado Kaukoya, Francis Azor, these goalkeepers can still make us proud if they are determined to do so, if they're determined to put in the work to learn more uh, about goalkeeping. I think we should still give them a chance. There's no point to criticize. I don't, I don't want to even go back there. I, I think it's, it's a new era for him under the, the new coach because players get, uh, tend to do better under a new management. It doesn't mean that they were bad for the old management, but they want to step up their game to ensure that they maintain their jersey or they maintain their number one shirt uh, with the national Team. And my expectations for this game, uh, we heard yesterday that uh, real friend Didi will not be playing for the for, for, uh, in that particular game because of an injury sustained in training. He wasn't really fit. Joseph Osiro, I heard him speak this morning. He wasn't really fit. He was, he's been struggling. Leicester City are having a shambolic season. So mentally and, of course, physically, it has shown that uh, real friend Didi will not be fit for that game tomorrow. So I think it's a chance for the new names. I think it's a chance for the likes of uh, Rafael Unyedikachi, who plays for... Uh, yeah. Okay, so quickly, because we, we will be calling it a wrap in no time. Let, let's okay. look at the NBA now. Uh, the NBA okay. coach, Ime Udoka, who's been suspended uh, for uh, fraternizing uh, uh, for the session of 2022 and 2023. What are your thoughts? And some people have stated that really a moral compass uh, with all of this discussion uh, it's been generating a lot of boss, but I'd like to share your thoughts on this one. What do you make of this action, the suspension of the coach? All right, just like I said in our previous conversation that football is an unforgiving sport, basketball, sports in general, people tend to forget what, what you've done, especially when you get to when, when you get involved in, an, in a scandal. But I'd like to remind anyone listening, anyone watching this particular one, that Emil Docker is the first coach for the Boston Celtics since 2010 to qualify Boston Celtics to the final. Is the fifth coach, the fifth coach in 25 years to win or to make it to an NBA Finals in his debut season. And of course, you know already he's the first Nigerian and a first Nigerian to be an NBA coach. People will forget this achievement he did in just one season. And I don't want people to forget that. We are all humans. We, we get involved in some immoral things. No one is perfect. And it's quite a shame that uh, on the 31st, uh, 35th anniversary of an uh, Aquibum Day, an Aquibumite somewhere in uh, Boston was handed a suspension for the 2022-2023 NBA season. And according to reports, they've already, uh, of course, uh, lined up a replacement for Emil Docker for this season. But hopefully, hopefully because... It is, uh, it's clearly his job is on the line. He's in jeopardy right now. And uh, we might not see him coach at the NBA, but we just keep praying and hoping that uh, as just as many people who got, him, who got themselves involved in scandals, how they got out of it, hopefully he gets out of this particular one. I can remember Ryan Giggs. Ryan Giggs got, got in a scandal as a Manchester United player. They had to take the Pope. Uh, the father of the one of the fathers of the Catholic Church in the UK to come and settle the issue. So it's not the first person to do so. He's a prolific, prolific NBA coach, and we saw that last season. It's just quite a shame that this happened to him, and uh, had to be against uh, someone who has been in the Nollywood, someone who's been in the mainstream of entertainment in America. His uh, his partner, I won't say his wife, because they've just been engaged for the past seven years. They're not married, although they have kids. So. Uh, she prefers to be called a partner to Emil Docker. Nell Long, uh, she is a big name in the Hollywood industry. And uh, what a shame this is happening to Emil Docker. But I still have so much belief in him, and I, I hope he will come back strong. All right. Uh, interesting way to see how things work in other parts of the world as far as uh, standards are concerned, you know, uh, uh, values are concerned. Uh, I think we can learn for a leaf or two in our own climbs here. Um, Monday, it's great to, to have you join us. Interestingly, Emil Docker is also... Um, from from uh, Adia Good Aquabum State as well, and uh, even though he's American, um, uh, great things he's doing in the United States. We hope he pulls he's through. He's Nigeria first. He's yes. from a teen and local government area Absolutely. before he's in America. Absolutely, yeah. yes, indeed. So we hope he pulls through. We wish him all the best uh, with his uh, partner as well. Um, Monday, thank you very much for your time. Uh, uh, Jose Pesero has said that he wants Nigeria to win the next uh, African Nations Cup. Um, just very quickly, do you feel that is possible? Let's drag you back to that conversation. Do you think that's possible? Well, we've not seen the best of Joseph Pesaro. What if he tells us that Nigeria can win the next Nations Cup and the next major tournament? We should just watch and see. All right. We should we should underrate him. We should just give him the chance because he has come out to brag about his confidence, and I like that. And I, I think he he's, he needs a chance to show what he has uh, come out to say he will do. Thank you so much. Have a fantastic weekend.
Do have yourself a great uh, weekend. It's going to be fun here in Accra, I mean, I'm, I'm ready to party. I can imagine. I know how they party down in New York. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. You, you know that Kofi, the Epang and the Afang, it's going to go down today. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. All right. Spare some for me. Maybe when I come next time, I'll have right. my own uh, share. Uh, talking about birthdays, so Kwebom State is not the only state uh, that is celebrating its birthday today. Uh, uh, a wonderful cameraman right here in Plus TV Africa, Richard, also has his birthday uh, today. So Richard, from Messi and myself, Wishing you happy birthday, many happy returns, and uh, we we would uh, eat rice and chicken today as well. Yes, indeed. Uh, God bless you so much, and uh, you know, grant you your heart's desires. Happy birthday! All right. Well, that's the size of our conversation, and we appreciate you for being with us all through the week. We will return on Monday, but if you missed out on any part of the conversation, we're always on uh, social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Is at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Ebuko. Have a great morning. My name is Kofi Bartels. We'll return on Monday. Have a fantastic weekend. <laughs>